Okay, so I'm going to do a quick example here. I put some random data in. We're going to do kind of what you need to do for 20, which is really just run a regression and then understand where the values are. So again, I would suggest use a tool. If you'd like to do this by hand, your book tries to give you numbers where you could do it by hand fairly simply. Um, and all the equations, of course, to calculate sum of squares. I mean, sum of squares for the outcome is easy enough. We know how to do sum of squares, right? So if you're going to do the sum of squares for y, you just do the entire sum of squares like we learned to calculate back in chapter four. Um, and then you have to do cross products and all those things. So you can do all those by hand if you want to, to get to the equation and the sum of square values you need, or you can use your tools and then understand what your tools give you as far as output. So that's generally my suggestion um, for our class. It's gonna minimize the likelihood you make a mistake if you use your tools correctly. So here, if I was going to run a regression, if my X data is in the A column, then my input X, I'm going to select that data. Notice I have it going from 2 to 11. So I did not include the X letter, only the numbers. So I'm not going to check labels. Similarly, for B, my Y data is in the B column. So I'm going to select 2 to 11 here, no labels. I just selected the numbers here. I have the output going, so it's going to just get stuck right here. And I selected to put the output right here in the sheet so that we can see it easily. Once we do that, we run a regression. We actually have all the answers we need here. So everything you need for this problem. So let's see, if you look at what's the regression equation. Well, the slope equation is the intercept plus the slope times x. The slope always gets multiplied by x, right? Because the slope is the relationship between x and y. So your slope always gets stuck with your x variable. So these coefficients represent the intercept and slope. So here it would be three point, I'm gonna round. So 3.8 plus 0.1x. And that is my slope equation based on this data. Um, your sum of squares, the sum of squares total is your sum of squares for y. That's how much variability there was in the outcome that you're trying to explain. So my SSY here would be 66.9. And then for the sum of squares regressed, right? How much you explain, that's identified here as the regression. And for the residual, that's identified here. So sum of squares residual here is 65.9, rounding to one decimal place. So notice we didn't explain much variance at all, which makes sense because this was random data. You wouldn't expect random values to explain one another. They're random, right? So here we've got SSY, we've got SS residuals, we've got our slope equation. And then this also gives us, so R right here, this multiple R being we only have one variable, this is Pearson's R, but it'll always be in positive form. So it's the absolute value. If you want to know if it's positive or negative, you can look at the slope and that will give you the sign. So the sign here of our slope is positive, right? So being the slope is positive, this is also positive. Um, R squared is going to be squaring this value above. So notice that we do the square of this value. It's going to be this number right here. So this is R squared. Now, if we take R squared, and we turn it, you know what, I'm gonna use this one. If we take R squared and we turn it into a percentage, that is the percent variance explained in the outcome. So we only explain 1.54% of the variance in Y by knowing X. That's not all that useful. And finally, the standard error of the estimate is also given to you in the table. So the things that you really are looking at from this output that align with the question are these values right here looking at number 20. So that's how you can use Excel to get the things you need. And they're all there as long as you understand what the output is. Of course, like I said, if you're interested in, in doing this by hand, um, you can certainly follow up. If those are the kinds of things where if you tell me you'd like to see me work through a problem in a particular way, then I can always post videos for that. But this is the way that you can get all those values uh, quickly using Excel for a problem like 20.